Number one, marriage is a partnership. And yes. so there are a lot of things that I was busy doing, but Jane was very busy as well. She, uh, I, the greatest blessing that our family had, uh, I think when our kids were growing up, is Jane sacrif- sacrificed a lot of things. We sacrificed a lot of things so she could be home, especially when our kids were little. And that, that was a gift to our family. But make no mistake about it, it was a partnership. She ran finances in the early days. She oversaw the house kids, a lot of that, uh, you know, I was, we were in the beginning stages of starting Radiant, and so Sunday mornings, I would get there early, she would get the kids ready and bring them to church, and so uh, there was a lot of both of us giving and taking, but in the early days, uh, when we started the church, and for many, many years since, we made the agreement that, okay, there are, there are some guardrails that are important to us, because family's number one. God, you know, God is the, the center of everything, but the most important earthly thing is our family. And so made the determination that it's like, I'm, I'm not gonna be gone more than three nights a week. Um, I'm taking Fridays off. That was our date day, our day to connect. Uh, I used to call it Jane's day because I'm like, what do you wanna do? And we would, you know, go to the family Christian store. We didn't have any money. So we go to the family Christian store, Panera and TJ Maxx. And it was like our date day. Uh, but we were together, so I wouldn't. I would protect Fridays. I wouldn't be gone more than three nights a week. And no matter what I had on my desk, because there was always something. I did everything in the early days. At five o'clock, I left the office and I came home because we had dinner. We we're going to put the kids to bed. I wanted to give her a break, play with the kids. Then we would connect. And uh, those were just some guardrails that we put in place. And you know, your kids get older, things evolve and they change. But like our date day, for the most part, there are exceptions, but uh, we, we spend Fridays together. And uh, you always know that Friday's coming, and so if there's unresolved issues, you know, you're gonna talk about them, or you always have something to look forward to that we're gonna connect and we're gonna go have fun together. Um, I try not to be gone, when, especially when our kids were growing up, I try not to be gone all the time and be home most nights so that we could have dinner together. And then when our kids got older, and they had sports and different things. And we started doing breakfast together where we'd get up early and we'd have a big breakfast together because that was important to us. And, you know, uh, what do they say? They say that the, the years go fast, but the days go slow when you're raising your kids. It seems like it's gonna be forever, but the years go really fast. And what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna just slide through the years giving priority to a lot of unimportant things that aren't gonna have long-term uh, value and miss the things that are the most important. And our, our kids were, uh, were so cute, were so much fun at every different stage. And they were challenging at times too. But I wouldn't give anything. I, would, I wouldn't trade anything for those, for those early days. What would you, you got any? How did I do? Did I do okay? A plus. <laughs> no, he did, he did amazing. And the thing was, if it was like he had an extra thing come up or whatever, because obviously life is whatever. Um, it was easy to let be like not totally annoyed because he was so good the rest of the, you know, 95% of the time. So yeah, it wasn't like I was like, you've been gone three nights, you don't get to do anything else. Um, Unless it was like golf, or then it might be a little bit, mm, no. Um, so, yeah. And we always, we always did a vision retreat every year, too. It was a big, a big part of it, is what you don't have a vision for, you'll get dominated by. And so we would get away for like two or three days. Uh, we would have either her parents or my parents watch the kids, and we would go away, and we would do a vision retreat where we would spend two to three hours a day going through... Our, our budget, going through our giving, going through our spiritual, how are we doing spiritually each? How are we doing together? We would set goals for our kids. We'd set goals for sex. We'd set goals for our finances. And it was our vision retreat. And then we'd go have fun. We'd go to South Haven or we'd go see a movie. And we did that for like two or three days every year. And that way we had a vision for the next year. And then the next year we would come back and say, how did we do? And it gave her an opportunity and me an opportunity to be able to say, you know, I think we can improve here or I need you to be more present here or those kinds of things. 
So it wasn't like time was getting away from us, but we were actually planning and preparing for the year together, and that helped us make adjustments. And sometimes there were adjustments that needed to be made. So as you were talking, I was remembering uh, a moment you were, you and Jane were sharing about, I actually I had some notes written down, so I was pulling up, lessons you guys learned in marriage and ministry together. Um, and your first point was prioritizing each other above everything else. That was like your first point, how, you know, and I think it kind of ties in this question. You, you shared a story about how there was a moment where you realized, I'm not doing this well. It was you guys in the car going to oh, uh, graduation or something. And so I don't know, maybe you can take some time and share that. I felt <coughs> like it was valuable. That moment clicked in your brain. And so... Best story ever. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. I wrote it down. That's, yeah, that's worst, great. Worst story ever. <laughs> we were newly married, living in Kansas City, Missouri. I was a youth pastor. Jane was away from family. We had Ashley. Jared, I, I think she was pregnant right, with Jared. Just pregnant for Jared. It and <clears throat> in all transparency, I was not a good husband in the first couple of years of our marriage. I had never seen a healthy marriage. Um, my dad had been divorced three times. My stepdad was uh, wasn't the ideal. I'll just say that. Um, and so I was driven. I was driven to prove myself. I was driven to build a large ministry, a youth ministry. Uh, and so I did not honor the guardrails. I did not honor the, the limits. I was gone all the time. Jane didn't have a car. It was my, you know, I was driving it around. Uh, I was working almost every day and Jane's away from home. So we, there was tension. Uh, we're young, there was a lot of tension. It was a Sunday afternoon, and after church, uh, we were driving through the Walmart parking lot, and the air conditioning was broken on our car. It's 95 and humid out, and Jane's pregnant, so she's miserable, and I spring on her in the, on the way to the, through the parking lot. I said, hey, we have to go to this going away party for one of the girls in the youth group. Her name's Sierra. Uh, we have to go over to this, the house. I think it was the Haskins were hosting it. I still remember, I still remember names. Um, and so we're gonna go over there and say goodbye. And she's miserable. She's not comfortable. She feels, she was very far along pregnant. So she doesn't feel pretty. She's tired, all those things. And she wasn't planning on it. And she goes, well, I don't wanna go. I said, well, we have to go. So we're, we're just gonna stop here and then we're gonna go and we'll just stay for a few minutes. And she goes, well, I don't wanna go. <laughs> and I said, well, we're going. And then she says, I don't wanna go. I wanna go home. And I don't know if anybody else has ever had this where you know in your mind you shouldn't say something. <laughs> but you say it anyways, have you ever said, and it's like slow motion when it's coming out of your mouth. Anybody ever had that? <laughs> Only me? So in my mind, I'm like, don't say it, don't say it, but I'm mad. So I'm like, I, I, I said it, and it was a defining moment. Here's what I said. Sometimes living with you is like living with my worst enemy. Except here's how it came out in my head. Sometimes live it was like slow motion. And as soon as I said it, I looked in her eyes and I saw fire. <laughs> and, she, I, and I knew I should not have said that. And uh, she said, take me home. And I took her home. <laughs> but it was shortly thereafter, that, I think that was a defining moment for me because I realized not only was there fire in her eyes, there was hurt in her eyes. And I realized I was not prioritizing Jane. We had been there two years. I think it was within a month or so. I told her, I said, babe, we're gonna move home. And she missed Grand Rapids. We're gonna move home. If I have to, I'll get a secular job. And we're, we're not gonna do this until our marriage is healthy. So we moved home uh, a few months later. And... Uh, the saving grace for me was, I think, right after we moved home, it was the first time I ever heard Jimmy Evans speak. He came to our church that we were at, and he spoke on marriage on the rock. And first law uh, out of four laws of marriage on the rock is the law of priority, uh, that your marriage has to be your priority. And I had never heard this before. It was the first time I realized 
Marriage doesn't happen by accident. Marriage happens because you have a plan and because you honor one another. And when I heard that, it changed everything inside of man. I made a determination and I made a commitment to Jane. I'm not, not that I'm gonna be perfect, but then I'm gonna do my best to honor you, to love you, and I'm gonna learn how to be a husband. I'm gonna learn how to be a man that is worthy of you. And uh, I've striven to do that. We've been married 32 years this last July. And, uh, and hopefully, hopefully, I've become a better, a better man, but she's an amazing wife. And so, um, 